Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Building It Up with Bertelsmann, India's first podcast that focuses on the growth banks of a startup. I am Ankur Variku, your host, and with me today is someone who I have come to believe defines entrepreneurship for this country. He's been at his startup since the year 2000, which is 18 years in the making, has seen itself go through a fantastic IPO, and yet today he says that he's not even getting started. Deep Kalra, the man behind Make My Trip, and everything that is about Indian travel e-commerce. In today's episode, we not just travel through Deep's journey as an entrepreneur, but also spend time with him thinking about what does it take to build a great product. Thank you so much, Deep, for joining us and spending time. It's a pleasure to have you on Building It Up. I wanted to spend time with you on focusing what it takes to build a great product. And you've done that exceptionally well in the travel industry. If there is any player that one instantly recognizes as the de facto travel stalwart in industries, make my trip and all the brands you've built. But when you started, it was nowhere near the industry that it is today. Uh, completely uncharted territory, booking online for flights, hotels was unheard of. You start this in a country that's still growing online, still figuring out its internet base. How did you start visualizing what that product should be in these early days when it was just a website, sure. um, nothing else? Sure. And what were the first learnings that you had on making a product in a market that has never been done before, at least for the segment that you started for? Sure. Uh, well, firstly, thank you, Ankur. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. Uh, I think podcasts have uh, come of age uh, yes. in India and hopefully uh, people find them useful. So, yeah, I think if I hark back to uh, when Make My Trip was started, and this is year 2000. Yeah. So, you know, I can kind of divide up the the company's growth in three stages. And you've actually picked on, I think the first, first stage, stage is the itself. most exciting always. Yeah. Uh, because you really don't have that much of an idea of what the customer expects. Yeah. So, you don't know at that point of time, it's going to be an iterative process. Yes. Because when, you're, uh, when you give your version 1.0, uh, you're not already saying, hey, we'll tweak this and do this. You want this to be your best, yeah. right? Uh, the second thing what's tricky is, besides not knowing the consumer that well, uh, I don't think you even know your own capabilities a, as an organization that well. True. Right? And that becomes also quite tricky because uh, you're trying to put forward something which is wow, and will work very well mm -hmm. and will work very well for millions of people. Yeah. Straight up. Like yeah. it's like that. Exactly. So it's not like starting a restaurant where yeah. you say, okay, listen, yeah. a few I get food, food yeah. and, and I'll be there and I'll fix everything. Because once you put, as you know, in the online world, your product out B2C, boom, it's yeah. showtime. Exactly. And it's showtime for, you know, that's it. You get one chance. Yeah. So we went through our trials and tribulations like everyone must, I guess. And the site from day one of Literally, when I started working on Make My Trip and then over the next few weeks started hiring people, I think we went live in six months. If I look back, probably only three months of those was the whole team of about 40 people. So wow. it was, uh, yeah, I think it was pretty good. We did outsource technology mm -hmm. up front. Uh, we didn't have those tech chops, which was obviously a terrible mistake. Hmm. And it took me a good part of, I think, uh, five years to wow. bring in technology. Wow. Uh, and the first five years, of course, were tough. We were floundering. We were trying to figure out product market fit. So we launched with an India website. Yeah. And we launched with a NRI website meant for U.S. India, uh, yes. folks in the U.S. coming back to India. Yeah. Uh, the India website completely bombed. Yeah. And it bombed because we had tons of lookers, but no one was buying. Buying. And they weren't buying because this is 2000 <laughs> when they were really, really wary of dropping their credit card online. Yeah. And that's the reality. Yeah. The NRIs weren't yes. because the NRIs were already buying. So yes. the NRIs probably got used to buying thanks to eBay and Amazon, Amazon and Expedia, yeah. 96, 97. Correct. And they said, yeah, this thing works. Also in the US, as you know, if something goes wrong with your card, there's a char mischarge, which today is there in India too, you'll yeah. fight it, you'll get it back. Exactly. So I think they were very confident buying online and they didn't expect a company which is you know, basically going to run away with their <laughs> money. I think scams also came later. But in India, people started using us a lot to research. Hmm. So they said, we'll research for the best fares. Okay. Uh, we started only as a ticketing platform sure. because that moves first online. 
and uh, then they call up their uh, friendly travel agent and they'd say ke web pe to ye mil raha hai and that was the typical this thing and they drive the price down and Correct. then they try to get a cheaper deal so i think we dealt with that for a while but within i think 3 or 4 months of being live uh, we realized we're going to run out of money if we keep uh, marketing in india mm-hmm. as well as in the us so we shut down india marketing right we kept the site going <laughs> so the site was going it was just you know like basically paying hosting charges to yeah. no development work on that at all but just letting people come to make my trip and see it and we kept watching those numbers and mm. growing slowly people were using this again as a comparison thing we had built uh, i guess for uh, for scale in terms of we had built our direct connects with airlines mm-hmm. uh we had built our link um, or our, we had consumed the apis from amadeus mm-hmm. to get all the l- full service carrier fares yeah the direct connect one is a very interesting one mm-hmm. because the first airline we went to was actually air decken okay and this is now we had moved on to 2005 so yeah. i won't bore all of you with what happened between 2001 and 2005 but basically it was survival that's all got it hand to mouth survival and like you said enough has been kind of written and said about it but i think it forges the team together so it got really it. i mean you know we we shrunk to half our size people yeah. who believed became radical believers yeah. people who didn't believe said we're going back to the world which is fine and got i think uh, we couldn't take the weight of more than 20 odd people so kind of we chugged along but come 2005 a couple of interesting things happened and mm-hmm. that's when the product started defining itself better which is india started buying online mm-hmm. thanks to irctc yeah so i have to give them credit for that <laughs> although they're beating us up now but i give them credit because they got people comfortable yeah it's a government site exactly. you know people believed in it there's a trust element there's it. a trust element also it took away so much pain yeah so we all remember queuing up at railway stations waiting for your turn you'd reach the window and they'd say there are no tickets yeah. then you could probably start all over again or whatever and god forbid if you had to cancel and if you had to say exactly and if you had to send someone to do it there was no way the person could call you from there because yes. this is also well mobile was there but, but you know, incoming was not free exactly <laughs> 32 rupees <laughs> yeah. a minute so i think um, IRCTC took away a lot of pain people started moving to it quickly and that happened 2003 2004 yeah. and then Air Deccan launched in 2004 which is for us that was a watershed year yeah. because Air Deccan said and they had these massive billboards everywhere saying fly for 999 yeah. Bangalore Delhi and this is the time Bangalore Delhi was in other nine so it was 10000 yeah. rupees yeah. and they were saying wow, and people saying is this even possible and then they did some schemes which were like 99 rupees and everyone said where do we log on so you log on to airdeccan.net and very often the site was down you call your travel agent the travel agent did not want to sell you a low cost carrier ticket because they made no margin Margin-less. on it so i remember distinctly going to bangalore to meet captain gopinath and i sat with him uh, me and kyu my uh, colleague co-founder we went together and we said so this is what we want to do we'll build a direct connect and people can this thing even if you don't pay us commission that's fine i think he heard us for about 20 minutes lots of sketches on the table everything and then he looked at us and said uh, I don't understand a word of what you're saying. <laughs> Let me call my CIO in or CTO. So he called the CTO in. The CTO got a bit more, uh, <laughs> and they had never done a direct connect. Wow. No OT in the world had connected to a low cost carrier I actually, see. because wow. in the US, it they came up at a time where the low cost carriers there was no internet. So we had to really explain to them. Finally, we figured <laughs> out where they hosted. So they were hosted with someone called Radix. and then we said connect us with them and they connected us with them at the same time we got a lot of grief from amadeus here because they weren't being very helpful saying why do you want to cut across and go directly mm-hmm. so no one could figure out what we wanted to do and we said listen all we want to do is get the inventory real time get the rates real time yeah. offer them to consumers and let the customer make the choice yeah while that got done i think the value prop was so strong the value prop actually was consumer you make the choice mm. do you want to fly at 6 o'clock in the morning and save 500 rupees yeah. or are you happy to fly at 7:30 in the morning pay 500 rupees more yeah. do you want to fly low cost carrier not get a meal have maybe less leg room etc and it's a new brand or do you want to fly in you know a little bit more luxury or a sure. lot more luxury because yeah. soon came along kingfisher and everything yeah. else you choose and you make the choice the customer in india had never made the choice before the travel agent always made the choice it was almost like a doctor going to a patient they exactly. had no, no clue. medication yeah. yeah they're saying you know you are going to take this drug wow. and you're going to say okay is there a choice and so they said so it was very heady and i think that clicked when you raised the money from self um how strong was your conviction that this money would not be used for figuring out the product as much as 
for growing what you had already built? No, I don't think that conviction was there. I think we were very honest with them. We'll need now millions of dollars. It was single-digit million funding still. Hmm. Uh, we'll need millions of dollars to really create a brand. Like that, I think there was complete clarity that you hmm. can't build a brand even in 2005 in India yeah. uh, with a few crores, which sure. is what we had. Let me go back to one thing which I think a lot of founders ask. You're not a software engineer by profession. No, unfortunately, and but I, yeah, didn't I, I, I do. I, I do didn't remember a science in class ten and twelve, <laughs> so I, I, I can code in basic. I, I, I do remember you saying that one of your regrets is not to do computer engineering. Completely. Now, Completely. to a founder who unfortunately is not a computer yeah. engineer, how hard is it to build such an exceptional technology and product team? If I had to do this all over again, <laughs> I would start with one co-founder, uh, he or she, who would have complementary skills. So either I'd be the techie and he or she would be the business person, or oh, I'd be the yeah, business person, he or she would be the techie, period. I think it, it's awesome if you can have it all in one, Sure. but then I don't think uh, Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> are born every day. Yeah. Uh, even Larry and Sergey needed someone to run yes. their organization, I guess. But I think um, it's, it's very hard. We've just gone through so many CTOs, it's become a joke. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, the last few years, we I think we've lucked out. Finally, we have. So I would, uh, anyone who's starting out in this, if they are not from a technical background, I tell them, even if you can't code, that's fine. But if you're technical background, that's okay. But who's your complementary skill? And you look around, you look at some of the most successful guys, uh, they understand tech deeply. Mm -hmm. So if you look at Bhavish, what he's done at Ola, you look at Bini and Sachin at uh, Flipkart. Uh, and maybe that kind of, you know, gave them uh, Vijay at Paytm. It's given them, you know, I guess a shorter runway. So, yeah. you know, they were able to probably, uh, uh, you know, crash various things. Mm. So I, I would definitely uh, redo that. But then, you know, uh, that's that's the way it is. And beyond, say, this curiosity and this learning curve, what do you usually look for when you're hiring? If, if you, I, how, how personally involved are you in hiring? Quite a bit, yeah. So huh? there are a lot of positions where I like to be, uh, well, in some positions, if it's leadership team or something, then I will actually be the main hirer yeah. between Rajesh and myself. And, you know, we're, we're always kind of doing something. There is change always, which is good. Uh, but then some other positions where I'd love to meet the folks mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe have a veto. So I think, yeah, they're fair, what do you look fair for? degree. Um, you know, it's very kind of cliched to say fire in the belly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think... A strong point of view and the conviction to defend it. Hmm. So I really like Irrespective that. Irrespective of whether you yeah, agree so, with that point of so view. So I, I like to try to, you know, take people somewhere and say, hey, you know, and, and get them. And a lot of people fall into the trap of just saying what you're saying. But then there'll be people who say, yeah, that's all fine. Sure. But I think there's this. So I think conviction is very important. But you can put that across respectfully. Hmm. So I think that's really nice where you people they have a point of view and they're putting it across which is very different and you didn't see it from that point of view yeah. but that's what you want you want an exactly. addition to the team which adds a new dimension yeah. if we are all the same then you know where are it's you a bigger you not a better you exactly where are you going to get the really out of the box thinking from yeah. so I think uh, and I do tell Rajesh that very often I, whenever you know we've thought of the same thing I said this is terrible Rajesh we definitely need an X factor in because we're thinking too similar and so it's nice to have uh, people who think very differently about the same problem. Got it. Yeah. Given that you've built a fantastic product team deep and you yourself are not a coder but an admitted mm -hmm. product guy, what is it that you look for or there is, is there a checklist when you're interviewing truly exceptional product people for MMT GoI people? Uh, yeah, I think there's a mental checklist for sure and depends on the, on the level that you're interviewing because I think it's very fashionable to say I'm a product guy, etc. <laughs> but, but I think... Um, the best product guys who I've seen firstly have to be very Puritan in their approach. And mm -hmm. I said this before, and what I mean by that is they should not uh, get polluted in their mind and in their thought process when they're building the product with anything but the holy grail of funnel mm -hmm. and of conversion. Mm -hmm. So very often, and we've, you know, we ran into that trap too, which is we used to say, okay, let's also, we're measuring, you know, dollars and cents as well so mm. you know the whole revenue part comes in yeah. so only a few years ago did we actually split up the product function into a revenue product mm -hmm. where this person or this team is only looking at the dollars and cents nickel and dimes I'm getting out of that mm -hmm. and pure product which is completely conversion and nothing else yep. 
and those conversion rates and ratios and especially like i said managing our funnel whether it's a four step it used to be a five step on the app we can even look at three step funnel becomes the holy grail hmm. and they are only obsessed about that so when you're building you have one lens in mind which is my consumer my customer are they going to find it easy to do are they going to find it easy to navigate where is the trap what's happening when they put that out and they get that proverbial 1% traffic to you know play with on an ab test they are only obsessed about that and nothing else hmm. and then they ramp up and they go to 5% they go to 10% and you know i i really am really mystified and disappointed when their product people who do a few customer thing and then they say we're done no you got to keep <laughs> going back yeah. because the indian customer is so you know different and everyone so i am pushing people all the time we've actually institutionalized something called go to market day which i did which is just listen guys if you're not in the market the idea is that you have to spend at least one whole day in the market sure talking to customers for product guys that needs to be 5 days yeah. it needs to be 7 days maybe you need to listen to a product interview one a day like that's your podcast for yeah. the day that's your audible thing for the True. day and you have to understand but i think it also helps if you can see the recording or be there and actually interview people or have a moderator uh, do that so we put a lot of emphasis on that and so i love asking product guys where they get their inspiration from hmm. it's very nice to say oh like you know i saw uber launch with this which is fine of course they they're great and awesome but i do like to see originality of thought so yeah. you know the indian customer is different have you thought yeah. about the indian customer yeah. and so i think originality of thought conviction which i said before and then uh, you know always being able to uh, bounce that off with a customer base so i think that's what i look for and as a as a b2c company deep the customer service is of paramount importance yeah. and and how has mmt approached this is it more technology driven is it more throw people at a problem and then figure out the playbook and then scale through technology yeah i think it's been the latter very frankly initially we just said that listen we'll throw people at it and then you realize that these volumes uh, you know when you're doing several lakh like, transactions a day and even if you're a call to contact call to transaction ratio is small you'll still get you know Thousands. a lot of calls yeah. and that's not the way to do it so i think uh we've been saying it for a long time but we've really taken a very serious crack at it only recently mm -hmm. where now um chatbot has firstly given you a great place to be able to do it so we launched that we were among the first to launch on yeah. whatsapp yeah. uh as well as our own chatbots so we have gi at go ibibo my right make my trip and i think they're GI is now taking care of almost 10,000 transactions a day or 10,000 contacts, contacts a, day. a day. That's a great way of doing it because it's conversational and yeah. that's what people like to do. Uh, but I think the automation there both have to go hand in hand. So you have to I think focus it's also product. You got to focus on call drivers and which are your biggest call drivers and why and it's a classic case of root cause analysis. Mm. You ask why five times and you get to the root cause and then let's fix that and it's true it works yeah. but it's dirty. <laughs> right? So it's the non sexy part of exactly. products. So very often people don't want to do it. So it's lovely to find people who say yeah, I want to fix this. I believe we'll be golden when we have consumers who are basically saying listen uh great experience i'm a brand ambassador where everyone has to get to that so yeah. i i dream for that day <laughs> uh but uh, we're getting better i think uh you know self admittance we are probably a 6 on 10 where we want to be is an 11 on 10 so <laughs> i i'm very clear i'm the you know biggest champion of that internally that's all my people hear from me and uh complaints escalations do come to me and uh i keep them unread till they are resolved and it's really important for me is there a company particularly that you admire who's done this really well yeah i think we've heard of this company called amazon <laughs> I, th i think they do a reasonable job <laughs> no i i think it's very inspirational what they've built i yes. mean you know all of us buy from them i think many most of us have never called them and yeah. there's a reason you don't need to call them so yeah. i think it's uh, that's that's where the magic happens and we want to get there i know travel is much tougher but uh, that's that's the challenge uh, travel is a moment of truth you know yeah. you can't wait an extra hour for get an extra day to get it delivered exactly. but then that's uh, you know that's the beauty of that business i think yeah. we we want to crack that card awesome i want to take you to the to the moment when it seemed like everything that make my trip was doing was all set you had conquered the market you conclusively had the mind share of the consumer and suddenly there is this new player that comes in and 
starts a completely different approach, mm-hmm. which is just discounting base. It didn't be mm-hmm. as much as product and so on. Um, how would a founder react to that when you somewhat believe that you have the right spot in the market yeah, yeah. and someone just comes in and starts disrupting and you know that's not right or possibly mm. sustainable mm. and yet... And, and especially when it happens from uh, you know left field when you have no clue at all. Yes. So I think the biggest mistake we made, Ankur, in hindsight was uh, to believe that this is only a discounting play. Okay. So I only realized much, much later down the line that uh, when I got a uh, chance to deep dive into the technology, Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually seeing the extra net which the hotelier partners were using for Goai Bebo when I realized how good the tech was. Mm -hmm. And I said, hang on. I remember it was in our older office, conference room, and I just walked up to the screen. (laughs) And I think the next couple of hours, I was on that screen saying, my God, they've built, which we've been trying to and built it really well. So obviously, they've got the tech chops as well. Yeah. Uh, maybe more tech than product, but they got that. And it was lightning fast. And now I know why. Because, mm-hmm. you know, their, their CTO, Vikalp, is just an incredible guy. And the rest of the team under also is just so, um, like, I was very closely involved as a customer seeing the recent uh, uh, Mumbai Indians. We did this game with them, you know, as you score, you earn. Mm-hmm. It was done in record time. It was flawless execution, brilliantly done. And there's a new product which has gone live. It's on AB, so it's still on 1%, 2% yesterday really complex so I mean this team is uh, very very I think uh, driven and very smart and they like complex problems Mm. it's also a small team so I think that really helps uh, also, the biggest thing, like I mentioned, Vikalp has been with the team from ab initio. Uh, so he knows every piece of code, which is, this, like, yeah. as we know in this business, so critical. so critical. So I think that's when I started taking them very seriously. Your first reaction is denial. Hmm. Like, ah, <laughs> this is just a pricing play, it'll go yeah, away, and yeah. also ostrich, uh, head in the, uh, you know, buried down, which is really bad, which is wrong. So I've learned from that now never to take, never to kind of be little some of these uh, threats which are coming you got to take them all seriously so i am in the andy grove camp of you know being paranoid mm. and i think it's important to be because mm. if you kind of uh, you know dismiss them and uh, they keep getting bigger because if you dismiss them as founder mm. then others will Everyone say else yeah was, that's fine was, you know yeah. we dismiss it not gonna so you have to say no i want to understand this better understand it better get everyone to understand and start tracking mm. and then if you start seeing steady growth even when discounting goes away there's something out there because that's real stickiness True. and that means people are there for product so i think there was a big lesson learned but no i think it's been uh, good big learning there yeah. big learning have you have you ever faced the the dilemma of growth versus profitability in this long 18-year tenure? Have I ever not faced it? <laughs> so I think that's a constant uh, balancing act. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, you read all our commentaries also and we're public. So, you yeah. know, we have the, uh, uh, you know, I guess the onus of reporting, which is fine. But then it's a constant thing. Mm. Obviously, if, you know, we know we can grow faster, but then you have to ensure that your unit economics are improving all the time. I don't think there's been a time where it's not there, except when you had no money. Yeah. Because then it's actually not growth, then it's survival. Yes. So it doesn't matter how you make ends meet. But sure. the moment you've got money and you have the luxury of choosing how much to spend, mm-hmm. there's going to be a trade-off. Yeah. So it is the ultimate trade-off curve in our businesses. So that continues to happen, which is which is fine. I think that kind of keeps you alert. It keeps yeah. you on your toes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. It was lovely to have you, Deep. Super. Thank you so much for Thanks, spending man. time with us. This was really, really nice. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Yeah, I look really forward. Nice. See ya. Thank you. If there was any doubt in my head that Deep defines entrepreneurship personally for me and for most of us, then it's all gone away. I found this episode fascinating on so many grounds because I personally got to know a lot about product management, product market fit, and of course, Deep's journey is something that is truly, truly inspiration. So I hope you all enjoyed it just as much as I did, and I look forward to meeting you all again on the next episode. Do not forget to subscribe because that's the best way that you get to know of the new episodes coming in. And until then, it's Ankur Variku signing off. Have a great week ahead.